We know what we mean when we say someone is a snowbird, but if not, it just means that they spend the winter months living somewhere else that's probably a lot warmer than it is here. And then when they come back, they say, oh, I missed watching you when I was in Arizona. And we love it when they come back. <laughs> yes. Oddly enough, the U.S. Census Bureau says that they don't know how many Minnesotans are snowbirds. But if you think that it's time for you to become one, too, Julie and Daniel DeRoche from DeRoche Realty Group and Coldwell Banker Burnett are here to help you get it all figured out. And Hi, guys, friends. it starts with figuring out the order in which you will do things. Help me understand what you mean by that order and what's the first thing you got to do. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things to figure out and you want to go at it in a logistic way. So if you can keep, you know, most people are in a bigger house here and then they buy their house down south. Right. And it seems like they buy it and they spend a couple years going down for a little bit and then they go down south more and more and more. Mm -hmm. um, so when you want to get rid of your house up here, are you going to be able to pick out something first? Are you going to be able to buy something first? Or do you have to sell that house to get the money from it to buy something else up here? Help me understand that too. So do people, if they become snowbirds and they find their spot down there in Sarasota, um, typically do most folks have to downsize whatever their Minnesota house is just because they're not there that often and they need to help now pay for this second piece of property? Yeah, I mean, the lucky people don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Some people do. And I think it's more of a maintenance thing too. Okay. It's do you sure. want to be maintained? maintaining this big house up in Minnesota, especially through the winter months mm -hmm. while you're down in. A lot of our clients come to us and they just don't want the stress of having to worry about their big house in Minnesota. This is what I wonder though, do people find that they maybe bought too small of a house down south and then they've got this monster house up here where they're thinking like then when people come to visit them in Arizona, they don't necessarily have room for everybody at Christmas. It, it's yeah, a mix. It's yeah. across the yeah. board. We've seen people make mistakes on both sides, buying them too big and too small. Okay. Uh, it's it's definitely important to spend time at all the places that you think about because everybody's going to have friends that say, oh, come to California, oh, come to Florida, oh, come to Arizona. And honestly, the best thing to do is really go spend like a couple weeks or maybe even a couple months renting a place in each one of the places that people recommend so that you really get a feel for yourself. Oh. And then you can also see how much space you need. Because if you rent a place for two months and have family out, you start getting a feel for what you need out there. So a lot of folks might go, because you do have these different size options. Uh, condo is a pretty popular choice whenever folks are going down south. Yeah. Yep. So you condo down south, <coughs> transitioning to a condo up here. So that's also kind of a great thing to do if you're going to, a lot of our snowbirds, I would say, that spend more than six months down south and they don't, they just want a place to come up here in the summer. Yeah. Uh, they want to travel. We have a lot of clients. And maybe their kids wanna, up here have bigger houses. They do. Yeah. They, yep. And they want to travel in the off season in between that. And well, then, and you would want an association too. I, I would think absolutely. if you're not going to be there, and if you're not going to be there during the winter when it's time to shovel and plow the driveway, if you're in an association that handles all that, that takes away some of that stress that you're talking about. It does. And even security. Like if you have a single family home back here, you're just, let's say you're going through the efforts of actually shutting it down and winterizing it <clears throat> and not coming back for it. If somebody's not plowing your driveway, yeah. you know, there's bad people. People drive by, they yeah, see no true. tracks, and all of a sudden your house is primed for, yeah, so you've got to have security cameras even. Sorry, I was going to say, I got, there's a couple examples, like Julie's parents, Yeah, actually. what happened with your parents? It, it was a perfect example, and it was actually five years ago, this coming Thanksgiving, we're sitting at our parents' oh, dinner no. table, and I'm like, I think it's time for you guys to downsize from this big two-story, and I got a good minute of silence at the table, but we basically took them and showed them some, they didn't want to get less square footage, so we actually found, like, a twin home, so one level, actually had more square footage and more storage, mm. similar square footage of living space, but more storage. Yeah. yeah. And maintenance free. They they are oh, so yeah. friggin' happy. Oh yeah. So you don't necessarily have to think about like always downsizing. People can get hesitant about that because they want to have room to have everybody yeah. over. But just making it more conducive to that snowbird lifestyle, which is less maintenance probably on both ends. Yes. yes yeah. You definitely want less maintenance on both ends because people will have their two homes or even their cabin up north and their place in Florida. We yeah. see a lot of people doing that. Mm -hmm. But everybody's situation is so different. Everybody's level of finance is so different. You just really want to think about it and talk it out so long. Don't just jump and make a decision. I like your idea of not necessarily being afraid of renting for a while to <laughs> make sure that you really like where you're going to be and that you even like the idea of going. My parents have been renting a place in Florida and then now they find they're, they're just not ready to go for that long of a period of time. That mm. it just ends up being too long and they kind of, all their friends are doing it so they kind of thought we would do it too and it doesn't work for them yet. Yep. Or, if, or on the other flip side, if you really want to buy something down there but you're not committed to going down there a lot, buy something that you can rent out down there. Yeah. Sure. So That's you can what we make did. some money down there, you know, off of it while you're not living there. 
And you know, if you don't decide not to go there, it stays an income producing property and you can buy something else somewhere. You want to think about taxes quickly too, like where your home base is going to be based on your taxes? Yeah, I think a lot of people think that they're going to go down to Florida. You know, for instance, Florida doesn't have income tax. So they state, think that they're going to. State income tax. Yeah, state income tax. So they think go they're going to. I want to be there right now. <laughs> Move down a there big chunk. and not have to pay <clears throat> their, you know, be a resident down there. But the state that you're coming from, Minnesota, any state that you're coming from, they're going to want you to prove. They're going to be really strict about are you actually living down there? Yeah. That's your primary Is that your residence? primary residence? Yeah, are right. you doing your doctor's visits down there? Are your friends mm. now down there? Are oh. you just maybe coming back up here to visit every once in a while? But you really have to be predominantly living down there. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people think six months in a day and I'm in the clear. It's not, not that simple. Not that no. easy. No. Okay. No. So DeRoche Realty Group, Carriel Staging and Property Shots are teaming up to help a well-deserving person sell their home. I think this is really this cool. This is cool. So they want to offer free staging, photography, marketing of the home and a waived commission on the listing what? side yep. to someone in need. So <laughs> who are you looking for, Julian Daniel? Just anybody that's going through a hardship, um, you know, like maybe a spouse has passed away, mm -hmm. something where, or maybe a medical reason where they have to move, something yeah. like that. So Yeah, they're we, selling their home because they don't want to sell, they have to sell. Life has taken, decided for them. Yep, yeah. and exactly. And they've taken a true financial hardship and, you know, getting divorced because you don't like your spouse doesn't qualify, you know what I mean? Yeah. But losing somebody, military, you know, whatever mm -hmm. the situation is like that. We want to hear from everybody, but... Yeah. We're going to go through some strict stuff, but just there's so many people that's in real good need. Stuff. You want to help ease that burden. It's yeah. expensive to sell. Yeah. Yeah, no but kidding. Get ready. Yes, so I if that's know. you, <laughs> or if that's someone in your circle that you happen to know, here's how you can enter. Go to drealtyg.com forward slash promotion. We'll link up to that on TwinCitiesLive.com.